Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. I'm Bowtie David, live in Destin, Florida, Zone 9B. We are recording the third and final part of our garden tours for March of 2024. And this is, of course, the raised garden beds in the backyard. And uh, coming up, we'll, I don't know if by now all the seed starting videos are done. Uh, hopefully, You've, you're able to watch some of those videos and learn something from that playlist. I will link it in the cards in the upper right hand corner on this video. If you're on a device that gets cards, some devices do not get them. That's the little letter I and the circle in the top right hand corner of the video. Be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life on YouTube if you have not already, so you don't miss a thing as we uh, document the things in the garden. And videos do come out here on YouTube first, so be sure to not miss out. For those of you who have subscribed to Bowtie Life, I thank you so much. I'm so excited to be able to announce that just yesterday we accomplished 800 subscribers, and we would not have gotten this far, of course, without you. And we do so appreciate all of our heroes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So the biggest thing about this month in the garden is uh, we just got back from a little bit of a trip. We uh, went down to New Orleans and took a uh, cruise over to Mexico. Uh, got to We basically spent the whole time on the ship doing the sights and scenes of the ship and relaxed and rested before we came back and got back to the garden. Uh, I've been working on a big project <coughs> myself and uh, the break was very welcome. So. I really enjoyed that time off from the garden, but when you leave the garden and come back, you never know what you're gonna come back to. Some, well, sometimes, uh, are things gonna be dead? Are things gonna be overgrown? What's going on? In fact, one of the biggest things we'll show you here, and oh, I've been nibbling on these. This is a little broccoli. Mmm, those are so tasty, but, uh, Anyway, the theme of this uh, video, of course, is this this month's videos, the garden tours, of course, is the first looks and reactions to the changes in the garden. And uh, I've been very careful not to look at as things as I go. Uh, so hopefully everything that we see here in the garden will be first looks. I will admit that uh, green stalk right next to me is hard to miss because it's right by the back door. but. <laughs> it's pretty impressive anyway. Uh, yeah, so we're going to uh, be having this uh, map, of course. It's, it is a map of our property. We have a quarter acre here in Destin, Florida, right in the heart of Destin. And we really do a urban garden and try to get as much as we can. It's 100 foot wide by 106 foot deep, about a quarter acre. And we are converting as much of it as we can over to garden beds to grow food for us because we really enjoy fresh food from the garden, whether it's fresh or even canning some of it. So let's, uh, let's follow along with the map here. We'll, it, we'll stick it down here in the corner so that you can follow along exactly where we're at in the uh, raised garden beds. And we are going to start right here in the green stalk. It is growing something fierce. I wanted to start on this broccoli head that was just a broccoli head last month. Yeah, that's beautiful actually. I'm actually hoping this will go to seed. I have been eating these things. They still taste just like broccoli, but oh, looky there. There's even bee on it right now over on the other side. Can you see that? There he is making himself known. That is kind of cool to see. I've, I wanted to see what this looked like when it went to seed like this. Well, it's not quite gone to seed, but it's getting ready to. So the cauliflower over here that we cut off, uh, we chopped off the top of it and it hasn't done anything else yet. So I thought it was going to grow more cauliflower heads. We'll have to see what happens. This is a real surprise because this is parsley. Uh, I have not planted parsley this year. And this thing has just been taking off. Is parsley a perennial? 
Maybe for us, I don't know. Uh, I'm very surprised to see this much parsley just growing strong. It, I mean, it started to wither a little bit over the winter, but it just seems to keep on giving. But yeah, these little uh, florets that are popping off the side here, these are just so delicious. If you like broccoli, fresh broccoli, wonderful. There's another cauliflower back over here that I cut off, but it's not growing any additional things either. So I'm still learning on these uh, brassicas, how they grow. The strawberries, there's a few strawberry plants up here in the top that seem to be doing okay. There's some more down here, a little bit of dry stuff on them that I keep pulling off. I'm looking for uh, some, some flowers to start popping out, but I have not seen any yet on these strawberry plants. So we'll just have to wait and see, like we're doing with everything else this, this spring. Another <laughs> big old broccoli down there. I tell you what, th these things, even though they're like this, they don't, they're not tight anymore. They're starting to go to bloom. These things still taste just like broccoli. Wonderful. Very tender. I'm having a hard time not eating them. Lots of parsley through here. More strawberries. Just growing strong, but no flowers yet. So I don't know if they're going to do well. Oh, there's one of my paper clips that I used to hold that one down. We don't need that there anymore. I'll sit that up here on the top so I'll have it for next time. We have shoots. But yeah, there's more of that broccoli. I've been, as this morning as I'm walking in through here, I saw this and I started picking off these little florets. They are just so tender and delicious. Yummy. Not the usual broccoli you see but they are still delicious. The uh, lacinato kale down there is kind of not grown fast. It's not getting a lot of sun. Now I do turn this thing frequently. Of course it didn't get turned for a week. The whole thing turns. And uh, because it's on the shade, I think the lacinato kale or dino kale is just going a little bit slower, having a little bit uh, reduced development. Oops, this big one got pulled over here we go get that thing back up Ooh. Uh, oh that's not the big one that's another big one here's the big one over here anyway so that is the green stalk wonderful little vertical gardening tool i love this so we do have a not a lot going on in the garden other than things composting now we did have a special project coming up here in a few weeks that you're going to see but that is over with and we're going to back you can see look how dark this stuff is down in here that stuff is wet ready to go now remember there's cardboard under here i just wanted to dig down here to the cardboard so you can see this stuff is really decaying there are worms down there eating it uh ooh, there are there is stuff trying to grow through i should not have done that I will cover that back up. They will grow up through anyway. But that cardboard is helping to kill a lot of the weeds under there. We will be planting our ginger out here pretty soon. I have a, some of you may remember the uh, tray of ginger that I saved from this area. It is still sitting in the Florida room back there. I have watered it a little more than I thought I would. I just try to moisten, just barely moisten this soil to keep those things fresh. And they seem to be doing pretty good so far. We will be planting that in this area as soon as we are able. And of course the blackberries, now we looked at the blackberry arbor over on the other side and the outer garden bed tour, but this thing is doing the exact same thing. There's all kinds of growing tips going all over the place so this thing is about to just shoot out and do some crazy stuff it's coming down into this tree i'm not sure what the tree is I, i'm told it's a peach but we'll have to confirm that this year and i haven't as you can see i have not trimmed the tree either the okra bed which is down on the far end over here let me get over there to the other side so the okra bed is still composting it's kind of winding down getting ready for the garden. I will be putting a layer of my own compost on top of all this once I smooth it all out. And it will be ready for seeds here within the month. 
and we will be having okra growing here. Another okra forest growing in this area yet again. Just look at the black hair. All the little growth nodes are just popping out everywhere. That is very cool. So, yep, come over here and you'll notice all the broccoli has just gone to flower. I wanted to see and I wanted to get seeds for this year and well, I'm gonna have them, that's for sure. I'll have plenty of seeds and I bet if I'm, unless I'm careful, they're probably gonna re be reseeding themselves quite a bit. Uh, looking down here at the Brussels sprouts, it looks like there might be something starting to happen down there. Uh, We'll have to see what happens with that. This is the second year I've tried Brussels sprouts, but it's the first time I planted it in the fall. So hopefully we'll get our Brussels sprouts right this year. I did, of course, chop the big old stalk off those uh, broccoli. It's still in the fridge and still fresh because we have had bites off of it. It's wonderful. But now here's a good stalk. Look at this thing. Even though it's like that, it's still tender. It's not, don't write it off yet. See that just pops right off. Mmm. So delicious. So there is the brassicas. I did go back and look at the January and February garden tours. There actually is no change here. This one is still looking sealed. I can't tell if it's sealed or if it just was cut in the place. Where, no, it wasn't. I can see down the side. So it is just still sealed. We'll see if that ever opens up. I'm not sure. And of course the ladybug box is empty at the top here. No development on the tree between beds one and two, but we can go on over to bed two and you can see that the lacinato kale, my first main three plants are growing strong. And this is exciting to see. They are looking good, very tasty. If you're not sure if you liked kale, this is the one to start with. And you plant it here in Florida, in the panhandle you plant it in the fall and it will take off apparently because it is just going and we're going to be able to grow these things all year and have some really tasty kale i never really liked kale before i tried these so another random blackberry vine right here which is rooted somewhere down in here underneath the weeds and of course our chives I'm presuming that's what, the, I'm pretty sure that's what this is. I don't remember planting onions here, but I may have. We'll know once we see either flowers or bulbules coming off the tops of these. The bean bed. Okay, so the bean bed, we will be filling in with the horse bedding compost and getting this ready. We will be lowering this panel and we will be mounting the one just sitting up on top. We're gonna to be mounting it underneath the whole thing so we can hang a shade cloth over the top this year. That was the big downfall in my plans for the year. On the other side was where we had the hot peppers. So the hot peppers we had in this bed were the pepidou, the Thai hots, and the dragon cayennes. They were spaced out all along this area here. And these are the ones that we overwintered, nine plants in all. And you can see here that they look beautiful. Every single one of them is coming out with leaves just prolifically. I've never had this much, much success with overwintering pepper plants. I've tried once before and we had very spotty success. Questionable at best, but this year it looks like it's doing a lot better. So we will get, after we get this bed filled in, we will be putting those peppers back in this side of the same bed. Down here at the end, this of course is where we had the Everglades tomatoes. I've already mentioned those once. I really do hope that they can seed themselves. If they don't, I do have a lot of seeds collected for that. The uh, Super Sweet 100 tomatoes that were here, they actually grew very well. They grew over the arbor, gave us tons and tons of tomatoes, as did, uh, well, the Everglades, of course. I would like to get some sun gold finally. I have to find some seeds for the sun gold or some starts. We got a sun gold from Bonnie a couple years ago, a few years ago, and we've been two years now without sun gold tomatoes and we really miss them. They are delicious. Not sun sugar, 
sun gold and we are looking to get those back but these will all be cleaned out and we will replant our tomatoes of course tomatoes are not perennial they will grow for a season give all they can give and then die what i hope though is that the fruit that fell off those everglades will start sprouting somewhere down in there and if they don't whatever it's just another plant we can grow some more down past the end of bed number two we have our aloe patch which looking a little thinner than it used to be thanks to the freezes of christmas 2022 we did lose a lot of aloe in here nothing has bloomed since that freeze so we'll have to see if we can get some of these to bloom i may have to try some uh, extra measures uh in that direction to see if we can get that to happen but past that of course we come down to the hot pepper bed the really hot pepper bed and this is the bed that we had plastic over during the freeze that we had. We had, I can't remember, three or four nights where it got below freezing. We had this covered, everything was down solid so that the cold could not get to these plants. So the question is, are they coming back? And I'm looking down here at this first one here. I believe this is a jalapeno. I don't see any, not a jalapeno. I think this is a scotch bonnet. No, that's the scotch bonnet. This is a fatale. So I don't see anything coming out of that yet. I do. Look here. This is a Tabasco. And look, there's new growth coming out of that Tabasco plant, which means I'm going to have a Tabasco plant this year. And that's a nice big trunk down there that it's coming out of too. So that's looking real healthy. This here is a jalapeno and it's looking good with new growth. That is one of three scotch bonnet in a row and look at the green coming out of that that is just amazing tons and tons of green coming out of it these other two scotch bonnet have nothing quite yet i do need to get in here and uh, put some fertilizer in this bed top it off so they can get some good nutrients so if i come around to the side here of this bed we have some various grasses growing in here I'll have to clear out. These are actually really easy to clear out. You find the main base of it and pull the whole thing out. So that's not a very difficult task to do. This here, I can't remember what this one is, but I don't see any growth coming out of this one yet. That is a nice heavy trunk down there. So I'm going to be hopeful. Now remember, most of these survived the Christmas freeze of 2022. So we'll have to see what happens. This here, I believe that is a... I'm not sure what that is. That may be a Fatale. We did pull another Fatale out down here because I just had way too many Fatale this year. There's a couple, those two small ones on the far side there are Golden Cross from my friend Nikki and more, this is a Peri Peri here. A little bit of growth out of that Peri Peri. Is that possible? I don't know. Yes, we have strong growth coming out of that peri peri right there. So I am happy about that. Want more? Oh, there's something else. I think this is a peri peri also with strong growth in it. This is going to probably, no, this may be, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, in fact, I know what this is. This is the peri peri I picked from when I told Mrs. Bowtie I was picking from that shishito which I'm not sure is going to survive. You can see there's a lot of this clover growing around it. It never really developed too well simply because it didn't have good sun on it. It was kind of shaded out by all the other pepper plants, but it might, it might. I'm gonna uncover that, uh, that trunk right there a little bit and see if we can get something to develop there. Another jalapeno, oh, look at there. Coming around to the edge here, we have a mammoth jalapeno, and there is new growth coming. Now, this is another body bonnie plant that I bought, but let me see if I can get the camera down here. You can see new, new growth on it. That's it moving right there. That is my mammoth jalapeno, which I hope will take off because it did good for being shaded. Hopefully we can get a little more sun back in here. That's a Fatale over there. 
In fact, this is the Fatale that we experimented with rooting along the trunk of it with making adventitious roots and it did not do any adventitious roots for me. Uh, it's got a good base down there. We'll have to see if that develops anything. And then over there, of course, is another... Oh, that's the habanero. Oh, my habanero. Let's see if that do, do, has done anything. So that is a habanero I got from Bonnie Plants. I do see green down in the bottom of that trunk. So I'm getting hopeful. I'm going to uncover that stem to see if we can get it to develop some growth. That would be a dream come true. So that is the pepper bed. And of course, just past the pepper bed, we come into our elephant garlic bed in which resides a single, I think this is a Brussels sprout. Yes, it is. Single surviving Brussels sprout. And it actually looks like it might make it, which is very exciting. The uh, elephant garlic here seems to be taking off quite nicely. They're growing good and big. There's another dead Brussels sprout there and there in the, in the little canister collars. But they are looking strong. We do have one unknown, I believe, garlic down here that I missed when I was harvesting. And it is just sitting there growing away, kind of seeing what happens to a, a whole garlic that grows together. You can see there's all kinds of bulbules growing in there now. Kind of neat. That's either the Enchilium red or a Chesnuck red. I'm not sure which one it is. Past that, of course, we have the old tomato patch. And of course, none of these survive. These are perennial, I'm sorry, annual, which means they only grow for a year and they give all they can give and then they die. But we had some Nebraska wedding in here. We had Roma tomatoes. We had Princip Bourguets in here and they all did okay, but didn't really survive. These Princip Bourguets didn't survive our hot, hot summer at all. The Romas ended up coming back after the, after the heat was over. The Nebraska weddings, these two never came back. So those are delicious yellow, uh, almost sauce making tomatoes that we love so much, but we're gonna try it again. Hopefully I can get my shade cloth up a little bit earlier. Around the end of bed number three, of course, is underneath here, my big goji bush that does get sun and it is starting to get buried with a lot of weeds and other great stuff that I'll have to get in here and clear out, of course. So, yeah, goji berry. We'll have to see if we can get those to come back again. These are a very hardy, hardy plant. It doesn't need a lot of love or TLC, but it can get choked out by weeds, which is obviously what's happening here. So there you have it. That is the raised garden beds in the backyard. Uh, there's a few things happening. My biggest thing was I wanted to see what these Brussels sprouts would be doing and the cauliflower. Cauliflower is not giving any more florets. So I don't know if that's the particular variety I'm doing or what, it's a snowball variety. So they don't seem to be giving any more additional florets right now. I'm still gonna watch them wait and see like I have been. The kale, it's wonderful to see kale back in the garden again. Uh, onions or chives, I don't know. Uh, and then the biggest thing of course is the hot peppers that are coming back after surviving a second freeze. I planted those in July of 2022 after killing over 200 plants, uh, seedlings in my Florida room, not the place to be growing seedlings. And uh, we, we planted them in July. They plant, they grew, gave us a few peppers, went through the Christmas freeze of 2022 and survived and were prolific last year. Gave me over two gallons of mash for the year, which is probably gonna be enough mash for my hot pepper sauce for, I don't know, I'm beginning to think it's gonna be enough for a year or two for myself. But I'll be sharing some of that, of course. So yeah, that's very exciting. We are getting ready, of course, and uh, if you if it hadn't come out when by the time this comes out, it'll be out soon. Um, the spring seed starting, we're planting tomatoes and other things, more hot peppers, backup hot peppers that uh, 
we'll be getting in the garden hopefully and filling in the beds a little better. Thank you for following along today. I appreciate you uh, watching. It helps the video, helps the uh, channel grow. Uh, for those of you who have subscribed to Bowtie Life on YouTube, you are my heroes. I'm so excited to be able to announce that we broke that 800 subscriber point. Now it's not the next uh, milestone, but it's getting closer. And we actually broke that while we were driving back from our trip, uh, our little cruise that we took. But uh, yeah, you people are, you folks are my heroes and I am so thankful for every one of you. Uh, we are working hard to grow to that next level so we can do just so much more. Um, if you're just finding Bowtie Life on YouTube, please do subscribe. As I've already said, it helps grow the channel, but you don't miss a thing as we go through here and document everything that's going on. Uh, my brain, my ADD brain, I've tried journaling, I've tried photography, I've tried a few different methods of keeping track of what's going on in the garden, and my brain just has a hard time digesting it and keeping it useful. And I've discovered that these videos, when I make these videos, I post them, sometimes I'll turn them on the TV while I'm getting ready in the morning and they'll remind me of things and I'm, it tweaks my, my brain cells and makes me remember and keeps me excited about the garden. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing as we document everything that happens in the garden. It's one of the reasons why I'm so thorough with everything. It's a little bit of obsessive compulsive behavior, I know, but that is just uh, where my personality is these days. Hmm? Uh, another way you can help grow the uh, channel is to click the thumbs up on this video and of course share it with your friends on social media that are looking for hope and signs that spring is coming. And yes, it is coming. We see it everywhere. That hot pepper bed is really exciting. The ones that are overwintered in there are really exciting as well because we're gonna have hot peppers this year, probably way more than we can manage. We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed day.